there, I'm Kina with Stumbox, and we're at the Woodland Park Zoo talking to Rosalind, their resident owl keeper, about owls today. How many raptors are there, or owls, I guess? How many are at the zoo? How many of the species? We've got 10 owls on zoo grounds, mainly here at the Raptor Center. Awesome. I've heard people refer to owls and birds of prey as raptors. Could you explain that they're not tiny dinosaurs and how that actually works? Raptors are birds of prey, but the raptor word itself comes from Latin, meaning to grab. All raptors grab their food and it happens to be with their feet. So to be a raptor, you have to have very strong, powerful feet and on the end of each toe is a very strong, sharp talon. And it is a carnivorous bird, which means it likes to eat meat. Good, okay. And it's going to catch its meat live. Exactly how do owls eat their live food? Well, that's another characteristic of all raptors, not just the owls, but all raptors have a very sharply curved beak. So this beak is how they tear their food up. The other thing I've heard about owls is that they are nocturnal creatures, meaning that they are asleep during the day and awake at night. Could you explain why owls are so backwards? Owl likes to hunt at night because of the niche. The niche is the environment that the owl lives in. It doesn't have to compete with other raptors during the day. Oh. It can hunt at night when you're not all the other raptors are sleeping. Being nocturnal, these guys have a lot of adaptations that your other raptors do not have. And we're going to start with the head. Oh, when yes. you look at an owl, there's no <laughs> doubt in your mind it's an owl because that head is huge. Yeah. Owls have huge eyes. Oh my goodness. So if I had these glasses on, you would have to build my head all the way around these glasses in order to have owl eyes. Those are awesome. So just imagine taking two-thirds of your entire skull with just eyeballs. That's crazy. There needs to be space for a brain in there. Maybe that's why I call it a bird brain. I don't know. And they do. Um, owls are very intelligent, just as the other birds. They process information a little slower. They're just as intelligent. Those eyes are so large that they lack the eye muscles to move the eyes in their socket. Mm -hmm. An owl has to move its whole head in the direction it wants to see something. Adaptation for that, not being able to move your eyes in your socket, is that they've got extra neck bones. So they've got more vertebrae, neck vertebrae, than all mammals. Most mammals have seven. Okay. So even if you look at a giraffe, mm -hmm. a giraffe has seven neck They're bones. They're just really big. They're just really big. Okay. But an owl okay. have 14. They have asymmetrical ear openings. One ear opening is up high and one is down low. Think about how we sit and we listen to things, you kind of tilt your head back and forth. Yeah. Well, they don't have to. They can hear not only the depth their prey is away from them, but they can also hear the height. So being nocturnal, they've got those great eyes, they've got that great hearing, they've got the three raptor features, which is the forward-facing eyes, the curved beak, and the sharp taloned feet. An owl, being a raptor, uh -huh. has all three of those characteristics, and once you put all those things together, mm -hmm. that makes it perfect to occupy that nighttime niche. The other thing I've heard about owls is that they make th these things called owl pellets. Yes. Could you talk about owl pellets? Yes, an owl pellet, here's a sample. This happens to be a barn owl. This is a pellet from a barn owl. That pellet consists of the things that are not digestible, so that would yeah. be if they had a mouse, for example, it's not going to be able to digest the fur, the bones, the teeth. So these are different owl pellets. And inside of this pellet that you're holding, you can see all the different things that was not able to go into digestion. Oh and scientists actually can use a pellet to determine what that animal is eating, what that owl is eating. Diet that controls the owl's population, not the other way around. Some people think that the owls control the mice, right. but if there's not enough mice, then there's not gonna be as many owls. Interesting. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is owl vomit. It's regurgitation. Okay. What happens is the owl eats a mouse, uh -huh. and it goes into a section of their stomach called the gizzard. Oh, okay. And that's where the non-digestible items are held. And then usually about a day later, 
they will cough that up and when they when they're trying to expel a pellet it looks like they're choking they're <laughs> so like, awkward jerk, jerk, jerk. <laughs> get it moving up there you did mention a little about how the environment influences what the owl eats mm -hmm. so why should we be worried about this if we take care of our environment it's their environment mm -hmm. so as long as we can take care of an owl's environment by take care of our environment it's going to help them Awesome. So leaving things up that an owl needs, um, old trees, because you know owls don't build the nest. People think of birds building um, stick nests. Right. Owls do not do that. Now I'm not saying they won't use a stick nest, uh, okay. because something like the great horned owl will use a red-tailed hawk's nest before the red-tailed hawk comes back to nest. I love that. Owls typically breed earlier in the season, Okay. so that nest might be available for the great horned. Um, you can take the barn owl, right. who will use a sample like this box over here. They'll use man-made boxes. Owls will use an old woodpecker hole. The burrowing owl will use a, um, just what it sounds, burrowing underground. So there's an owl that lives underground. I did not know that. Holy and cow. that owl will use like an old gopher hole. So <laughs> owls take, off, take the um, opportunistic this way out <laughs> in order to have their I mean that makes sense there. you know if you don't have to build it yourself you might as well just borrow it these birds are just incredible so we would again like to say thank you so much to the Woodland Park Zoo for giving us Rosalind and her time and Koba to talk to and learn about owls and owl pellets we highly encourage you to check out their website at zoo.org the Woodland Park Zoo is an awesome resource if you're looking for more information about animals or if you're planning a zoo visit, check out their website. Thanks again so much, and this has been another great episode of STEMBOX with Owl Pellets and Rosalind. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>